I want to yes, get your take on the characteristics of this storm. The scope was just huge. Um, what fueled this storm to make it such a monster? Well, Marcia, you make a good point. I mean, you often see these kind of province-wide events in the, in the wintertime. I mean, a blizzard or freezing rain can come up from Windsor right up to the Nickel Belt and to eastern Ontario, and that's it. Often in the summertime, we hear about, you know, a neighborhood that was hit by a, a tornado, a, a district, an intersection, but not sort of a province-wide kind of uh, destruction. So I think that first uh, sort of hits me. I think the, the winds were extreme, but um, not as strong as you would see in a in a tornado, for example, winds in Ottawa, 120, 130 kilometers per hour. Uh, winds in the tornado back in 2018 uh, were like 220 to, two, three, to 260 kilometers per hour. But what it lacked in strength, it made up in terms of aerial extent, the geographical impact of this uh, system. And and just people are likening it to the, to the ice storm. I, I, I think it's difficult to compare one storm to another, but I can understand the fact that in, in hydro uh, restoration, I mean, it is often in a, in a single kind of a, a tornadic event, you can move men and women and machinery in there to, to bring people back to normal. But where do you start in a province-wide destruction? It's like triaging. I mean, where is it the worst, you say? So I think in some ways it had the elements of just a, a normal kind of lazy, hazy thunderstorm in the, in the summertime. Heat, humidity, but it was the strong winds. The winds were the, really the, the main. Sometimes you're going to have heavy rains and hail, but it was the strong winds that just like an army, I often, I've likened it to uh, the front line of, of soldiers just uh, marching across that battlefield and mowing down everything in sight. And this was certainly the end. I think, Marcy, also a very important element of this storm mm -hmm. in terms of the trees and the power outages was the time it occurred. Mm -hmm. You know, if it occurred in April, well, trees don't have leaves on them. Right. If it occurred in July, that root ball would have been often in concrete, you know, a hard ground and, and we need some Dry, rain. Yeah. Well, in May, I mean, the, the ground is soft. The, the tree has leaves. And so they just took that wind and it like added stress to it. And this is why you're seeing trees like like maples and poplars and 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 oak trees with deep rooted kind of systems are just like tossed out of the ground and not just like, you know, shallow rooted pines and and, and spruces. And this is devastating for decades to come yeah. because, you know, the tree that you grew up with is now, my gosh, is not there anymore on your front lawn. So I think it's from a psychological point of view, it's, hey, getting people back on power is important, but boy, it's going to have lasting effects, this, this major event. I agree. It is so sad to see those old mature trees down. No, um, clearly. So I know Environment Canada is investigating, <clears throat> but, but from what you've seen, Dave, does this look like the signature of a tornado? Do you think that there were multiple tornadoes? You know, I, I, I don't think so. I've not heard, I mean, Often what you can tell, Marcia, is the, the look of the debris. If it's mm -hmm. looking like it's all moving in the same direction, it's all moving sort of all facing northeast. In a tornado, it's more herringbone. It's more of a, a scattered kind of debris. And we didn't certainly see that. And certainly there were no tornadic uh, episodes. You can get embedded tornadoes in these kind of uh, derechos, these wind storms. But I think it was just a major kind of straight line, long lasting and the speed. I mean, if you drove from from London, when the when I think the storm first saw the evidence of the storm at 11 o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, you could go up the 401 uh, going on at, at, at normal speeds and and you would have not been able to outrace the storm. And that added speed of the storm added some strength to those uh, to those winds. And, you know, Marcy, the other thing is, you know, that 120 kilometer per hour winds were airport winds at Ottawa. But along that wind front, there could have been winds stronger in some communities. And that's why you're seeing some communities where were even more devastated or neighborhoods than other ones. It's not just a common wind speed for everybody. It's uh, different strengths. And uh, so it, it really is num numbing to see that here was that first kind of unofficial kickoff of summer. It felt like the weather seduced us to come outside, yeah. the heat and humidity, the sunshine, and then hell broke loose from a, a weather system that, hey, uh, was potentially going to be there and undercutted by a cold front. And wow, 
it uh, it was just a monster beast of a storm that it was. Yeah, come out, said the spider to the fly. So final question, Dave, what do you say to those people who <clears throat> are critical about the warning or the lack of warning? You know, Marcy, I think the lesson here is this, is that, you know, I mean, I think we can't necessarily always count on the weather service issuing the alert and warning in a timely manner for you. I think the weather alerts were were very effective in this particular storm. Not everywhere. Some people didn't necessarily get it. But certainly people east of, of Toronto got it. In Ottawa, the warning came out at 3.15 for a, a tornado, or sorry, for a, a thunderstorm that hit at 4 o'clock. That's a lot of warning. But I think the lesson here is that, you know, we when, when, the, when the weather is inclement, it's threatening, we have to be vigilant ourselves. We have to sort of sense that, you know, there's, it's not an atmospheric terrorist. This is a lot of warning to this. You know, the skies are turning om ominous. The, the, the thunder and lightning is distant. The rain is falling. The wind is coming up. You knew that something was about to break up, break out. And so that's why, you know, getting to safety and, and, and comfort and with your loved ones is the most important thing on your mind under these kind of, of situations. So I think I said, I think, Marcia, one person said to me, the best weather instrument ever developed was a pair of human eyes. They just look up. <laughs> And look out, and you can see nature doesn't, it always forewarns you before it hits you. And I think that there was a lot of forewarning by nature from this particular storm. This is one for the history books. Dave Phillips, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Dave is Environment okay, Canada's senior climatologist.